You've seen creeks in Appalachia running orange for miles like a chemical spill nobody reports. It's not just muddy water. That color means something devastating is happening beneath these hills. Over 10,000 miles of streams have been poisoned by abandoned coal mines, leaving dead water where trout once ran. Why has this nightmare been allowed to flow for generations, and who is actually responsible for fixing it? Drive any back road through coal country, and the evidence is impossible to miss. Water the color of orange soda snakes through the valleys, winding past farms, under rusted bridges, and alongside church parking lots. The rocks lining these creeks are stained the same rusty red, sometimes streaked with yellow. Locals have names for it, some call it Yellow Boy, others just say the Dead Creek. The water doesn't move the way a healthy stream should, it slides over bare stone, leaving behind a crust that flakes off like old paint. No minnows dart between pebbles, no frogs cling to the banks, even the weeds at the water's edge look burned away. People have fished these streams for generations, but now there's nothing to catch. Kids grow up hearing not to wade in, not to drink, not to bother. In some places, the smell hits before the sight, a sharp metallic tang that hangs in the air after rain. This isn't a rare sight. In Pennsylvania alone, more than 5,500 miles of streams run like this. Ohio and West Virginia have hundreds more. The orange stains don't wash off. They creep across culverts, seep into backyard ponds, and coat the roots of trees that lean over the water. For most, it's just part of the scenery, another thing that's always been there. But every patch of orange means something is deeply wrong. The color is a warning, written in the water, ignored for decades. The orange color in these creeks isn't a natural accident, it's chemistry set loose by coal mining. Deep below the hills, coal seams run alongside a mineral called pyrite. Most folks know it as fool's gold. When miners cut tunnels through the rock, they expose that pyrite to air and water for the first time in millions of years. That's where the trouble starts. Pyrite reacts with oxygen and water to form sulfuric acid, the same acid found in car batteries. This acid eats away at the rock, dissolving iron and other metals like aluminum and manganese. The water that leaks from abandoned mines is loaded with these metals and is sometimes 10,000 times more acidic than clean stream water. In healthy streams, the pH sits around 7 neutral. In acid mine drainage, it can drop to 3 or even lower, making it as harsh as vinegar or lemon juice. When this toxic mix finally escapes the mine and hits the open air, the dissolved iron rusts on contact, turning the water bright orange. That rust coats everything it touches, rocks, roots, and the creek bed itself. The other metals stay dissolved, invisible, but just as dangerous. Some streams even carry traces of arsenic and selenium, adding to the toxic load. This is what scientists call acid mine drainage. It's not just ugly, it's a man-made chemical reaction that poisons water, kills fish, and leaves entire valleys stained with the evidence. Across Appalachia, the damage stretches farther than most people realize. The orange water isn't just a local oddity, it cuts through entire river basins, shaping the land and the lives around it. In Pennsylvania, more than 5,000 miles of streams are contaminated, with the Monongahela, Allegheny, and Susquehanna basins hit hardest. These aren't just numbers on a map. Each line traces a valley, a neighborhood, a place where someone remembers when the water ran clear. West Virginia's Cheat River watershed stands out as one of the most battered. For decades, its tributaries ran orange, killing off fish and silencing the river that once drew anglers and paddlers from miles around. In Ohio, Sunday Creek tells the same story. Seven miles of stream near True Town run the color of rust, with up to a thousand gallons of polluted water pouring in every minute from abandoned mine tunnels. USGS surveys show that in some watersheds, the list of surviving aquatic species has shrunk to almost nothing. Maps tracking these streams look like a web of wounds, lines of orange and red crossing the hills, connecting old mine sites to modern towns. 
The stains follow the path of coal seams, cutting through backyards, under highways, and along schoolyards. No part of the watershed is untouched. The scale is staggering, more than 10,000 miles across Appalachia, each mile a reminder that the problem isn't isolated. It's built into the geography, spreading through every branch and tributary, with no easy way to draw the line where the damage stops. Coal built entire towns across Appalachia, but it left behind a mess no one was required to clean up. For more than a century, there were no laws forcing mine operators to fix the land or water once the coal was gone. When a seam ran dry, companies packed up and left, sometimes overnight, leaving empty shafts and flooded tunnels behind. The pollution that leaks from these abandoned mines today is a direct result of that policy vacuum. Pennsylvania alone is littered with nearly a quarter million abandoned mine sites. Each one is a potential source of acid mine drainage, and most have never been treated. It wasn't until 1977 that Congress stepped in. The Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act set new rules for active mines, finally requiring operators to post bonds and restore land after mining. But the law drew a line in time. It didn't apply to mines abandoned before 1977. That meant the worst problems, old tunnels leaking toxic water, were simply written off. The companies that dug those mines had vanished, dissolved, or declared bankruptcy decades earlier. No one could be held responsible. The result is a legacy of pollution inherited by communities that never made the mess and never profited from the coal. State agencies track the damage and apply for federal funds. But the backlog is staggering. For every site cleaned up, dozens more sit untouched. The law was too late for most of Appalachia. The stain on these creeks is the visible cost of letting industry walk away with no plan for what came after. In the Cheat River Valley, memories of clear water and wild trout have faded into stories. One resident remembers catching dinner from the river as a kid, back when the water was cold and full of life. Now, the only thing that fills the creeks is orange sludge. He tried to sell his house last spring, but every buyer turned away after seeing the rust-stained stream in the backyard. The deal collapsed. Down the road, a clinic has seen more people coming in with rashes and unexplained kidney trouble. Families replace water heaters and pipes every few years, eaten through by the acid in their well water. Some skip showers when the tap runs orange after a heavy rain. For people here, the cost isn't just measured in lost fish or ugly views. It's in bills, in sickness, and in the feeling that no one is coming to help. Change starts with a simple test kit and a notebook. Local watershed groups are training volunteers to sample creek water, checking pH, measuring iron, and recording how far the orange stains reach each month. Uploading this data to state portals like Pennsylvania's eFax or Ohio's Clean Water Exchange puts polluted streams on the official map. That's how communities qualify for abandoned mine land grants which pay for treatment systems and restoration. Some groups are even turning iron sludge into pigments for paints, transforming waste into something useful. Anyone can join, sign up for a training, collect a sample, and send in the results. Every data point makes it harder for officials to ignore what's happening in the water. Today, more than 10,000 miles of Appalachian streams still run orange, visible proof that pollution outlasts profit. As the water keeps flowing, so does the cost for communities left behind. The stain won't fade on its own. The question now is who has the will to finally clean it up?